How unstable is the current transfer portal long term? How long until things go too far and rules need to be made? Commissioner, we need you. Well, there are rules, Matthew. No one knows what they are day to day, but there are rules. But rules are, you know, they're only as effective as people's need to follow them. And no one feels like they need to follow the rules right now. I mean, Drake May said he's not going in the transfer portal yesterday. If you don't think that dude has fielded offers before he ever put his name in the transfer portal, you're crazy. So obviously, people are looking at the speed limit sign, laughing at it, and then flying past it at 97 miles an hour. I got many thoughts on this, but I will try and condense it down as, as best I can. It, it probably comes down to several camps you could be in as to whether you think the NIL situation is good or bad, or maybe you're indifferent on it. I think most people understand what we're looking at right now is unsustainable. I want you to listen to this, okay? Now, now before I say anything else, I wrote down here, I wrote down the word listen, and I circled the word listen. I want you to hear what I do say, and I don't want you to hear what I don't say. What I am not saying at all, ever, at any point, period, in this segment or any segment is we need to take away guys' ability to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Not being said, listen, listen. So, listen to this stat. How about this? This is per the NCAA. Only 54% of football players who entered the portal last year enrolled at a new NCAA program. Now, you may think like I did. Oh, that probably means a huge chunk of them just, just pulled their name out of the portal, right? They withdrew their name. They went right back to where they were. Only 4% withdrew. 54% entered the portal and landed at another NCAA institution. 4% withdrew their name and just landed back at their same institution. I ran the numbers. That's 58% of players who entered the portal that we can account for. Does anyone want to tell me where the other 42% went? That's a Netflix mystery series. 42% of players who entered the transfer portal did not withdraw and did not wind up at another NCAA member institution. That is wild. There are players making horrific decisions life-altering decisions. You're talking about not four-year decisions, 40-year horrific decisions based on bad guidance, in some cases no guidance. So look, I'm not saying take away the freedom to do it. I'm not saying it. I'd love to have more education on this thing. But here's the other part. If you're yelling at me, oh, you say this is unsustainable. Well, you can't be taking away players' rights. I'm not taking away any players' rights. I'm suggesting let them keep the right to transfer let them keep the right to profit off their name, image, and likeness. I want to remove the allure of the transfer portal. This is where conferences have to come in. No head coach can talk sense into a guy who is, who is hell-bent on leaving because he thinks he can get a better deal somewhere else and he thinks the grass is greener and he doesn't understand that green grass is above a septic tank. They can't see it. They shouldn't be able to. You couldn't when you were 19. Why in the world should they be any different? How about someone perhaps an adult in the room at the conference and league office, take it upon themselves to get in one of those big board rooms and put together incentive packages that remove the allure of the transfer portal. Keep it there. You're free to use it if you want to. I don't want it to be tempting or nearly as tempting as it is right now. Here's why it's tempting right now. Because if I'm a college football player, the average college football player comes from a lower income to at best middle income background, probably skewing more towards the lower income background. And $15,000 means everything to them. Just like it meant everything to me when I was their age. And right now, $15,000 is worth its weight in gold. Conferences have to step up. The media rights deals alone that those conferences are entering into are worth billions of dollars. I am a believer that if a conference got into the NIL game, the Big Ten or the SEC, whoever, if they entered themselves into the NIL game and said, Pete, Tim, Johnny, just for the fact that you play at Missouri or Purdue or South Carolina or Florida, you are making fill in the blank. I don't care what the, 
put 40 grand a year on the table for him. That's a big number, isn't it? You're telling me every one of those players on scholarship making 40 grand? Josh, do you know how much money that is? It's $3.4 million a year. That's exactly how much it is. I want to ask you a question, sir or ma'am. Do you know how much member institutions are about to stand to profit, especially in the two aforementioned conferences, off of these new media rights deals? Because some estimates push it over $100 million a year. Why? Just because you got an SEC sticker or a Big Ten sticker on your helmet. So, by the way I see it, you can either continue to watch complete and utter chaos and watch huge chunks of rosters turn over and watch 42% of kids enter the portal never to be heard or seen from again, or you can have some common sense about yourself, understand that you've identified the problem, the solution's in the mirror, you just have to come off your hip pocket a little bit, which would account to maybe a dent in your wallet at the sake of saving the sanctity and integrity of your product. And I look at it and I say, how is this not common sense? If you're spending that much money, it, uh, listen, if I were a network executive, I'd be the one on the phone with Greg Sankey or Kevin Warren saying, you think we're paying you this kind of money so that your product can be in shambles? So that those rosters can be in shambles? So pretty good coaches are deterred from even participating in it? We're not doing that. Get a hold of your product. Get your houses in order. And if it takes $3.4, $4 million a year being allocated to funding your own players, you don't have to call them employees. Certainly we can find legal types to wiggle our way out of that. But here's what you get in return for that. If you're willing to put that kind of coin on the table, players are willing to stick around. Players are willing to stay. And here's what you could really do. What you could really do is tier it. And you could, add, you could ascribe tenure to being part of the incentive package. In other words, if I know I'm making 15 grand as a freshman, 25 grand as a sophomore, 35 grand as a junior, and I get a 60 grand payoff if I complete four years of eligibility at one program, then imagine how de-incentivized I am to look at the transfer portal every five minutes. I know it sounds simple. I know it's not that simple. I also know another thing. When there has been a problem that is existential in nature presented to this sport, they've gotten the job done. When they needed to schedule games in the COVID year, they got it done week of. When they saw how much money that playoff would make them, they didn't take no for an answer. So listen to your coaches for a change. Like listen to the boots on the ground for a change. When they're telling you that the current structure of college football is unsustainable, they're right. You don't live it every day, they do. They're right. Please listen to him and do something about it. That would be how I stabilize the portal. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.